Welcome to Weddings with Zeta. your host and producer, Zeta Christian. Hi everyone and welcome back. Weddings with Zeta is the show where you're going to be inspired by the experts. Tonight we're talking about the wedding cake and my expert is Matthew Segura. He is an executive chef and he is the owner of Vida Dos Pastry and Cafe in Newington, Connecticut. Matthew, welcome and thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. You know, I have to tell you, when, when I was doing some research to find the pastry chef I wanted to have on the show, I was inspired by the beautiful cakes that you had on your website, by the things that people said. And I remember as I was reading and I was looking, and especially when I, when I saw the, the wonderful flavors you had, and we'll get to that in a mm -hmm. minute, I remember thinking that, you know, when I was when I was a young woman, I attended many a wedding. And it was almost understood, it was expected that the wedding cake would be dry, mm -hmm. um, wouldn't have much flavor, and you would eat a bite because it was the thing to do, it mm -hmm. was the custom. And it was also understood that the cake would pro was probably frozen for weeks if not months might have a little frostbite and this was just eating a little bit of that wedding cake was part of the participation in the ceremony and it's so not that way today not at all <laughs> not at all i looked at stuff you had <coughs> on your website and i thought oh my gosh this is going to be a delicious show <laughs> so let me jump right in with um, some questions that some of the uh, the show's fans on facebook asked okay. because um, there is a page for um, Weddings with Zeta under Moon River Rituals on Facebook and if you go there you'll be able to join in the discussions and I asked people who were on there the other day I said we're going to be interviewing I'm going to be interviewing Matthew Segura from Vita Dos and we're going to talk about the wedding cake so what questions do you have so I got three. First one came in from Carol Chaput in Connecticut and she wanted to know What's the most unusual request for a cake that you've ever received? Okay. Um, I'd say the most unusual request that we've had was actually a cake we did recently. Um, a bride and groom came in and um, they wanted, they had a normal tasting. They designed their wedding cake and we, you know, they left and then I received a phone call from the bride and she wanted to surprise the groom and she wanted half of the wedding cake to be completely Batman themed. Oh my. So the whole wedding cake, one side was all decorated like a wedding cake with ribbon and flowers. And then the other side was um, a night sky and uh, city skyline, the Batman logo. Oh my God. Um, so that would probably be the most unusual request that we've oh, had. Oh, well, I bet that was fun working with, mm -hmm. with that couple. <clears throat> um, what about, okay, this is a question from Chris Dubois, who lives in Newington, and he asked, multiple questions. What okay. was the most challenging or unique themed wedding cake? So let's talk about challenging. What's the most challenging kind of cake? I would say the most challenging, believe it or not, is the simplest cake. Simple? So when the, what I hate to hear when I hear they have a phone call and the bride or groom says, oh, we're just looking for something simple, <laughs> no design really, just simple white frosting. Believe it or not, they're the hardest ones to make because Why? there can't be they need to be perfect. There aren't any flowers that are going to cover anything up. There can't oh. be any little air bubbles. Um, sometimes they don't want a border. Well, a border covers the cardboard that's under the cake, so you kind of need to be creative. So a simple, plain white cake is actually the most difficult one to make. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I would never have thought that. And yet when you explain the reasoning why, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What about um, a unique themed kind of cake? 
Um, a lot of times the most unique themed cakes are the cakes that we do for groom's cakes. Um, normally the groom's cakes have something to do with an interest that the groom has. Um, so the bride gets her wedding cake and he also gets a cake. I think we have a picture of a groom cake yep. of one of the ones that you did. I couldn't believe it when I, when I saw the picture. It's an armadillo. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's take a look at uh, photo number one. That's the armadillo wedding cake for the groom's cake. Um, what, what kind of cake? Uh, is it the was cake red itself? velvet. Red velvet, a red velvet. Look at that, a red velvet armadillo cake. That's really something. That is that is extremely creative. I'm, wow, Matthew, Thank that's you. that's really something. Okay, what about um, popular themes? I mean, is there something that like a lot of people come in and oh, everybody wants a such and such kind of cake or anything um, like that? for their wedding cakes? Yeah. Um, for their wedding cakes, most people do want simple cakes, um, or they just want it to be something that's incorporated with the colors of their wedding. Uh -huh. um, so we'll incorporate either fresh or gum paste flowers. Um, base, most, they just want the cake to be a centerpiece, but a lot of times it's not something that's gonna stick out. Um, all right, and I do wanna get to that too, that whole idea of the display. Mm -hmm. um, Another question. This was from Mary Coburn. Now, Mary Coburn is a wedding officiant. In fact, she was my first guest mm -hmm. on this show. And she said that not long ago, she did a wedding where instead of having a bridal cake, they had a pie, and then mm -hmm. they had lots of other pies. So she's asking, is that a trend? Is that something you're seeing more of, like wedding pies? Um, yeah, I mean, we see a lot of different things. A lot of people are being creative now because mm -hmm. um, some people don't want the traditional wedding cake or some people don't want cupcakes, which were, you know, a really big thing. Oh, yeah. Um, so some people are doing little pies or they're doing little pastries or um, a lot of people are doing like uh, cake shooters. Um, so it's like they're in little cups and um, basically it's still layered like a regular wedding cake or you could have different flavors um, and each one is decorated so each person gets their own little, oh. you know, like oh a little my. plated dessert but it's in their own little cup. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, do you think there'll ever be anything like, you know, like bridal brownies or... Yeah, I think there's always, there's always going to be something new. Something I like that idea. And so we, you mentioned groom's cakes a minute mm -hmm. ago, and I wanted to ask about that, too, in connection with years ago, and I'm talking, you know, when, when I was a young woman, we didn't call anything a groom's cake, but you would have a wedding cake, and then there would be a sheet cake. Mm -hmm. So are people now doing, are they still doing a wedding cake and a sheet cake? Well, that, uh, sheet cakes really come into play when you're talking about budget. Okay. Um, because a lot of a lot of people they have you know 200 or 300 people at their wedding and the way that cakes are priced they're priced per slice so display cakes are priced at a different price per slice than sheet cakes are okay so you might get a smaller display cake and then the remaining guests would get you know cake from the sheet cake and so everybody is still getting a delicious cake exactly oh that makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense um Colors, you mentioned a minute ago, and I remember I used to always think wedding cakes were either going to be white or maybe a little bit of an ivory color, mm -hmm. but there are all different kinds of colors of cakes now, and, and we're going to get to some of those in just a minute, but I wanted to get to something that I think is extremely important, and that's the ingredients. Mm -hmm. I noticed, I, I looked at a lot of different websites, and many of them talk about having, making their cakes with the finest ingredients. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I think the finest ingredients, well, it depends. And I think yeah. as the bride and groom going into the consultation, you there's no reason you shouldn't ask what kind of ingredients they're using. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people use the finest ingredients, but you don't know necessarily what kind of fine ingredients they're using. So are they using real butter or are they using good quality shortening? Or are they using good quality real vanilla? Or are they using really good imitation vanilla or are oh. they using really good cake mixes or are they making everything from scratch so it's it, depending on whether it's something that's important to you whether you want all natural i think the better way to refer to using the finest quality is also all natural so you would be talking about real butter and uh, real vanilla 
Exactly. Not, not a, and, a, an imitation. Mm -hmm. or fresh in your, eggs, in not your, powdered. Yep. Or in your fillings, if you're using, like we do a lot of mousses or fruit mousses, you know, we cook down, we buy the berries, we cook them down, we puree them, but there are also a lot of, you know, um, You're not getting compounds. Stuff in the cans. Exactly. There are uh -huh. cans that you can buy or compounds, uh -huh. but there are good quality, yeah. you know, preserves and, you know, canned fruit that you can use. It's not that it's bad quality, it just depends on what's personally important to you. Right. Okay. Th and that's a good thing to know. I, I don't know that I would have thought to ask that if I were, you know, getting married and shopping for mm -hmm. um, a wedding cake. I would not have thought about that. Um, the ingredients that you use, are they ingredients that? are available to anyone when they walk into a average grocery store? Um, most of them, a lot of them are. Mm -hmm. um, some of the purees that we use and things like that, um, uh, you can only get wholesale. Um, some of the flavorings that we use, um, but that's more because I'm personally particular. Yeah. Um, and I do like to use the best ingredients that I can find. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I know. So, so tell me about, what do you do when somebody comes in and they have, and the, the couple says, we need a cake, but half of the guests uh, are gluten sensitive or gluten intolerant, or I have somebody who is allergic to uh, dairy or somebody who's allergic to nuts. So if you've got allergies, if you've got issues with diabetes, or if you've got gluten sensitivity mm -hmm. or celiac, how do you address those issues? Uh, well, the celiac is a huge thing now. Yeah. Um, and I don't recommend doing the entire cake um, gluten-free. Um, but sometimes it's the bride that has a gluten intolerance or the groom or someone specific at the wedding. So um, we'll make cupcakes for, you know, five or six people at the wedding that might oh. have an intolerance or we'll make the topper for the bride and it'll, you know, it'll be gluten free. Um, we aren't a gluten free bakery, which that's right. something that's very important that you ask if it's a severe, severe, severe allergy. Yes. Um, you know, we do use flour. We have flour in the air. Um, but we're very careful to keep every, everything separate, separate bowls, separate pans and things like that. Right. But if it's severe, then, you know, you should probably go to completely gluten-free bakery. All right. What about, what about uh, uh, sugar? Is there any way to compensate for somebody who's got diabetes? Um, there is. Um, we do, we had a lot of requests with a lot of different dietary issues. Yeah. We've, um, you know, we use, um, honey because some people can't have artificial mm -hmm. sugar um, right. so we use honey or we use um, uh, for fillings we use uh, coconut oil um, just things but it's always something if we're not familiar with it I always have them come in and try it just to make sure it's something they're okay with you know what I mean yes and I think the important thing though is that you're having the conversation with the couple and you're finding out if there is something specific so that you can work with them exactly to to address it um, you mentioned fillings here just a minute ago, mm -hmm. and um, and you know cooking down the berries. And I do want to talk about fillings and frostings. I know that a lot of places have a difference between um, a regular filling, and then there's a level of, of premium. And mm -hmm. I know that you offer the two levels as well. Mm -hmm. What are the differences? Um, well, we like to have our price ranges. You know, so you can really get anything if you mm -hmm. aren't looking to spend a lot. If you are looking you know, for, you know, mousses and fresh fruit and things like that, those would be the premium fillings. Mm -hmm. um, and the not premium fillings are buttercreams. Okay. So they're buttercreams, you know, if it's a strawberry buttercream, we still use the strawberry puree, but we mix it into the buttercream that we make. Um, and we use a Swiss buttercream. Um, so it's just made with butter, egg whites, and sugar. So there's no shortening in it. There's nothing like that. So a lot of times people, have an idea of what buttercream tastes like and what a lot of people are familiar with is American. Uh, it's called American style buttercream, which is made yeah. with shortening and confectioner sugar. So it's very sweet and it leaves, um, you know, uh, an aftertaste. An aftertaste. Yeah. Um, so they're, very, they're always surprised when they taste the buttercream because they don't expect it to be as light and flavorful as it is. Um, so whether it's premium or not, you're still going to get a really good quality, you know, tasty cake. So I'm getting another message that you'll work with people depending on what you, you have options to offer. Exactly. I guess that's, exactly. that's the thing. Um, let's see here. You have signature flavors. I wondered if you could mention a few of those and tell me how they're determined. Uh, well, the signature flavors are basically determined on what's the most popular, what we're seeing people are asking for the most. 
um, and we do um, a strawberry shortcake, which people really like, especially in the summer. Um, it's a vanilla mascarpone mousse, and then we have a yellow sponge cake, and it's soaked with a res uh, strawberry puree. Oh um, it has fresh strawberries. Um, in the summer, people like lighter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they really like the mousse fillings in the summer because yeah. they're lighter, especially if you have a heavy meal. Um, and really, just the signature flavors are based on what people like. Well, I noticed one of the signature flavors was Reese's Cupcake. Mm -hmm. There was one called S'mores. There was one called Dream Sickles. Um, are they your favorites? Um, every this is going to sound strange. <laughs> Everything that I make, because a lot of people will come in and say, "Is that good? Is it not good?" Well, if I don't, if I don't personally like it, I don't make it. So it, it's good. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. they're my favorites. They're, we only have so much space in our cases, and I put what I like the best out there oh, like and what that. I think customers are going to like oh, and like appreciate. That. I, think that's, I think that's a good way to go. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to get a picture of a buttercream one here in a minute because you mentioned the buttercream, and, and I wanted to get into a little bit about the frostings. So if we could look at, uh, I think it's photo number two, we're looking at one with, with um, a buttercream. Yes. And this, look, that is just beautiful. And they've got a spray of of uh, little orchids mm -hmm. there along with it. So that frosting, that's that buttercream you were talking about that, yep. is, that is light, and look how beautiful that, that is. That's a gorgeous cake. Thank Matthew. you. Wow. Thank you. Um, now I have a question about, you mentioned the word marzipan. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about marzipan, and then I'm gonna ask you about fondant. So what's marzipan? Well, marzipan is almond-based. So it's, the base is almond paste. Um, and you can use it to make decorations. You can cover cakes in it. Marzipan is mainly used in Europe. Not so much here. Fondant is used more here to cover cakes. Okay. Um, and fondant, um, it's basically a sugar paste. Um, people love fondant or they say, oh, you know, it's not my favorite. I prefer buttercream. Um, a lot of times people really go with the fondant for the look of the cake. Let's look at photo number five, because I know we have a picture here mm -hmm. of a cake that has, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the fondant on yep. it. And that is, that is beautiful. Thank you. Um, and that has the draping on it, um, which there's also certain decorations that you need to take into consideration that uh, can only be done with fondant. So the oh, draping okay. and things like that wouldn't be able to be done on buttercream because it would pull down on the buttercream. The fondant makes it more stable. All right, now I have to tell you, I, I'm in a webinar program with um, Stephanie and Jeff Padovani. They, they created the, the company called Book More Brides. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a webinar with them now, and we were talking the other day about wedding cakes, and Jeff said something about the fondant and that it, it, he referred to it as being very rubbery and he didn't understand how people ate it. And his wife Stephanie said, oh, you're not supposed to eat it, it's just for decoration, you pull it off. So did he have like a, a not very good fondant or is it, is it edible? Do people eat it? Do they take it off? How does that work? Um, it is edible. Um, I'm not sure what kind of fondant he had. Mm -hmm. um, it also depends on the cake. If the cake's been sitting out, the fondant will develop a crust on it. Um, but the fondant that we use, it's a marshmallow-based fondant, so it actually is tasty. Um, you, all fondant can also be flavored. So if you have oh. a specific flavor that you want, um, you know, that would go well with your cake. Um, but it is edible. People do eat it. Um, it is very sugary, so people do love it or they don't love it. Yeah. Um, but no matter what, if you want the look of the fondant, the whole cake is covered in buttercream underneath anyways. So it's oh. all frosted and then it's covered in fondant on top of the buttercream. So a lot of people come in saying, oh, you know, I don't really, I prefer buttercream to fondant. You're still going to be getting the buttercream, but you'll, you will have the look that you're looking for with the fondant. Oh, nice. I had no idea. Well, I have to be sure to tell Jeff and Stephanie mm -hmm. that he just needs to try your fondant. <laughs> um, tastings. I know that a lot of the, the, the pastry shops, they offer couples the opportunity to come in and have a tasting. Mm -hmm. So when couples come in, they're, they're trying samples, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the idea? Yep. Do you, ever have, do you ever have couples who fake a wedding just so they can come in and sit down for an hour or so and <laughs> taste cakes? Um, we have. Yeah. Um, not many. Okay. Um, I also am not sure if they were faking the wedding, but we have had couples come in um, using different names. It happens to be the same couple, oh. um, and they'll come in a few times. Um, you know, we run into a lot of different <laughs> things. 
<laughs> well, what goes on at a tasting? Tell me how that works. Um, the way we do our tastings, we keep everything separate so you can mix and match your flavors. Um, and you're able to pick three different kinds of cake to try and three different kinds of fillings to try. So like for the different kinds of cakes, such mm -hmm. as? So you could do, you know, simple chocolate, vanilla, um, a lot of people do red velvet. Um, or we have different cakes. We can do um, carrot or apple or oh, vanilla see. bean. So, okay. um, so, you know, when we bring out the plate, there's the cake separate from the filling. So then you can mix and match and then you can decide maybe if people wanted to go with a marble cake, we could do layers of vanilla and chocolate. They could do two different kinds of fillings and they could kind of mix and match and see what works for them. Oh my, oh my goodness. Well, I could see why somebody might want to come back more than <laughs> once. Um, how far in advance should a couple order their cake? Um, for a wedding cake, we normally recommend six months to a year in advance. We find that people are booking or looking for their vendors for their wedding a lot earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's what I recommend. If someone comes in, you know, a month before and we have that day available, then I won't turn them away. Right. Um, but if they come in a month before or two months before and I don't have that available, you know, I, I don't want them to be angry with me, but there's only a certain amount of um, wedding cakes that we do per weekend. I understand. Um, <clears throat> I just have to ask you, when you were growing up, did people in your family bake? I mean, did, were you surrounded by the, the fragrance of the cakes, the muffins, the bread, and all that stuff? They did. Well, more, br more bread. Well, my grand grandmothers on both sides baked um, yeah. bread, and my mom baked. Um, but just food in general was a big part of... Yeah. You know, it was a big part of our life and it was just associated with happy times and parties and family times. So I think that's what made me want to go into this field. I enjoy making people happy and seeing their yeah. face when we deliver the cakes or they pick them up. So Matthew, I have to ask, <clears throat> when you do have any kind of family gathering or you're, or you're going to some potluck dinner mm -hmm. or something like at a school event or something like that, are you always expected to bring the dessert? Yes, <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, are you okay with that? I'm fine with it. With I'm, fine with it. I'm fine yeah. with it. Um, yeah, we have some more pictures that I want to show. And I want to talk a little bit about the cake toppers, about real flowers versus sugar flowers. And I think we have, um, let's look at photo number four. I think that's one that's got, these are real flowers, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. And, um, and let's take a look also, photo number seven also, I think, has real flowers. Those are the sugar flowers, those, the gum Those are the sugar flowers. Yep. Okay, the sugar ones. So those are all made by hand. Yes. And I know that uh, you actually brought in a little spray of sugar flowers, a little spray of sugar flowers that you actually handmade. I think we've got them over mm -hmm. here on the side. Those, that's amazing. I mean, to, to look at that and know that that's sugar and it's edible and uh, hard at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it'll hold its shape. Yes, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's really, really pretty. Thank very, you. very nice. Um, Oh, let's see. I know that from our conversation before that at one time you actually designed a motorcycle mm -hmm. for the top of a cake. Um, I want to look at, um, gosh, I've got a couple of photos here. I just want to be sure we get mm -hmm. them in. Mm -hmm. Let's look at photo number three, because this is a very elegant looking cake. Mm -hmm. And that one, because it's got that draping, that must mean it has that fondant yes. on it as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, and the theme for that wedding was um, a modern Beauty and the Beast. Oh, oh, I can see it, of course, having mm -hmm. seen the show several times, A Modern Beauty and the Beast. Very, very nice. So let's take a look at photo number six. Now this, we were talking earlier about colors. Mm -hmm. That's a green cake, but what is that design that's on the side there? That's um, brushed embroidery. Um, so a lot of people, when they're designing their cakes, a lot of time they'll pick up either designs that's either on their invitation or maybe it's on the dress. That happened to be um, a design that was on the bride's dress. Oh my gosh. <coughs> so you copied the design from the dress mm -hmm. onto the cake. Wow. You're good. Thank You're you. You're really good. <laughs> um, there's, there's another one here I want to look at because this, this brings up a, a subject I want to talk with you about. Let's look at photo number eight. So what are we seeing here? That cake is done with um, silk flowers. Um, I always give the bride and groom options of silk, uh, sugar, or fresh. Okay. Um, and this bride wanted to do silk. 
And um, a lot of what people are doing now too, depending if they want a very large cake, they'll actually do some of the tears in, sty um, in styrofoam. In styrofoam? So, and then they're covered with the... the and then they're covered with the fondant. Okay. So you'll never know. This cake in particular, the whole bottom tier was edible. Um, so that way the price per serving is actually only charged on the bottom tier. Oh. And then the rest of the cake is charged based on labor and uh, material that we use. So that's a way then for a couple to, to save. I mean, if they're looking, if they're it, working with a budget. Exactly. They could still have a pretty display cake, mm -hmm. but it doesn't all necessarily have to be edible. Exactly. And we do that a lot oh, for people okay. who are having a small wedding but they want a large cake, but they don't need that many servings. All right, now, we, we are a, um, a public access show, so we can't talk specifically about price, but you can give me a range. Mm -hmm. When somebody comes in and they say, I've got 50 people for the wedding, or I've got you know 300 people for the wedding, mm -hmm. how are things priced? Uh, cakes, they're all priced per serving. Per serving. Yeah, the, so we have, so um, the base, uh, I always give the base price, and then it depends on the filling and the decor. So the base price for buttercream starts around $5, and fondant would start around 7 Oh, so there's ranges. There's ranges. And then ranges. they go up depending on what, exactly. what you want to add. That's really good to know. And then depending on if they want all the layers to be actual cake, or if they want real flowers, silk flowers. Exactly. Or the... Um, the sugar flowers, mm -hmm. all of that factors in. So there's ways that you can. There are a lot of ways to save. There are a lot of ways That's, to save. That is and so still good get to the know. look that you're going for. Yeah. Um, after the ceremony, do couples still freeze the top layer of the cake to enjoy on their anniversary? Some do. Some it's very important to them. Yeah. So if they if they do, let's say a couple wants to do that, and they say to you, "We're going to freeze the top layer." Mm-hmm. Are there any tips for how to freeze that layer so it tastes good? Um, I just later? tell them wrap it two or three times um, in uh, plastic wrap and then also wrap it in foil and it should be fine. If there is fondant, the only thing that will develop an off taste would be the fondant. Um, so before you either eat it, either take the fondant off or before you freeze it, you can take the fondant off. Um, okay. All right. That's, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. So um, assembling, do you assemble the cake in the shop? and then deliver it? Do you take it to the place where, to the venue and mm -hmm. assemble it there? How do you do that? Um, up to four tiers we assemble at the shop and then we deliver it. Um, they're pretty stable. Um, and then if there are more than four tiers, we assemble it there. And then any added decoration like the sugar flowers or fresh flowers, all that's done at, on site. Matthew, I don't know how you work in a business like this. <laughs> I mean, I, w I would think that, you know, everybody would want to come and work, work with you so that they could taste what's the latest filling or mm -hmm. what's the you know the flavor of the month or or oh that one didn't come out of the oven quite right so we'll just we'll have eat to eat that <laughs> one that's really great and and unfortunately i'm getting the signal that we're out of time so um i do want to thank you very much for for being on the show and for bringing the the, the very very pretty little sugar flowers to show to us um i also want to thank my crew um especially ellen because she did some extra extra hard work for me tonight. Thank you very, very much, Ellen. And um, I want to thank you in the viewing audience. I love to close this show with, you know that, that concept, uh, I don't know if it was a song about love or a poem, love makes the world go round. Mm -hmm. So I think about that so you know then what they say about love. So go make your world go round. And join us again next time. Thank you. Are you planning a wedding or renewing your vows? Let today's leading wedding vendors inspire and guide you. To learn about upcoming guests and join the discussion, like us on Facebook, Zeta TV. Weddings with Zeta is a program of Moon River Rituals. For more information, visit ZetaTV.com.